Hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a video that will leave you speechless and outraged. The family of Sean Grayson, the man who brutally analyzed Sonia Massey on July 6th, is now trying to shift the narrative and garner sympathy for themselves. But their attempts are not only disgusting, but also infuriating. Now, Brenda Butterfield, the grandmother-in-law of, of Sean Grayson and mother of Deputy Scott Butterfield, has written a letter to the editor that is a slap in the face to Sonia's family and loved ones. Now, she's trying to downplay the heinous crime and, and silence the protesters who demand justice for Sonia. But we won't be silenced. We won't let them get away with their attempts to manipulate and deceive. Now, in this video, I will be sharing the reactions of, of two of our brothers who are fed up with the Grayson family's antics. They are calling out Brenda Butterfield for her hypocrisy and demanding answers. Why was Sean Grayson hired as a police officer despite his questionable past? Why are they trying to sweep this under the rug? And why are they pretending to be victims when they are the ones who enabled and protected a person who unalert someone? So get ready for a video that will make you angry, but also inspired to take action. We won't let them get away with this. Justice for Sonia Massey. Take a look at these videos. I'll be right back. Sean Grayson, the man who unalived Sonia Massey inside of her home on July 6th, his grandmother-in-law to be Brenda Butterfield, the mother of Deputy Scott Butterfield and the grandmother of Sean Grayson's fiance, has written an article for the Muddy River News. And it is easily the most disgusting and infuriating thing I have ever read in my whole life. And I'm going to read it to you guys now. So Brenda Butterfield is apparently not very happy that the Muddy River News and pretty much every other news outlet in the Midwest is covering the situation between Sonia Massey and Sean P. Grayson and the egregious actions that Sean P. Grayson took that resulted in Sonia's life no longer existing. Keeping in mind that Scott Butterfield is the only reason why Sean P. Grayson got that job in the first place. He had already been passed over by Springfield PD. He had already worked at six different departments in four years. And this is the mother of the deputy responsible for getting Sean P. Grayson in a badge has to say. So it's titled Letter to the Editor. Does anyone care about Sean Grayson's family or what horrifying reality they are dealing with? Okay, I'm going to try to read through this in a calm, cool, collected manner because when I read through it the first time, I had to stop myself from throwing my phone. First, to the protesters. What are you protesting? Sean is in jail. Charges are filed. Trial date to be set and punishment to be applied. Sean is not going anywhere, so please knock off wearing out your sweat glands. So please take your signs and go home and just be humans. Not not the amusement or disgust to the public. Point number two, does anyone care about Sean's family or what horrifying reality they're dealing with? What about his fiance he was to marry in October? She is an innocent young woman who is also unfairly being persecuted. Does anyone care about the destruction of her life? She is left to deal with an emotional passing. What are you, what are you talking about? Sean's future in-law families, a to-be father-in-law who is as close to Sean as a father as can be. Okay, Brenda. A future mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and brother-in-law who is Sean's friend. Future grandparents who love Sean dearly and still do. Shock, disbelief, and reality, but an undying support for Sean. The past cannot be relived. The future is unknown. We only have each day to pray without ceasing. The Sean everyone desires to hate and to persecute is not the Sean we have all known and love. We will always support Sean. Judge not, lest ye be judged. No man Man or woman is without sin. There is a final judgment for all. Signed, proud grandmother to be of Sean Grayson. And please keep in mind that woman decided to publish that article 20 days after Sonia Massey has passed away. 20 days. And it's literally just been a couple days since the body cam footage has been released and people now know the truth of what happened to Sonia Massey. And this is what you want to say. You want us to have sympathy for the man who took her life and his family? Oh, brother. Brenda, that was actually insane. Hey, Mrs. Butterfield. No, I don't give to the protesters. What are you protesting? He ain't charged. He ain't in jail yet. Prison, I mean. For a long prison sentence. For, for taking Sonia Massey out. No. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not. I'm not thinking about his family, his kids, his friends, his dog, his favorite fishing pole. I don't give a I don't care. 
I want that shirt under a jail. And if you really want to be truthful, I really would like to see him get what, Sha what, what Sonya Massey got. If you really want to be honest about it. So no, I'm not about, I, I'm, I'm literally not about to sit here and, and, and have sympathy. I don't. I don't. This human being took the life of somebody with, with, who had schizophrenia, was at least 15 feet away from him, on her knees with a hot pot of water, and this dumb sat there and popped her and took her off this planet. And you want me to have sympathy for his family? Have some sympathy for Sonia Massey's family, Miss Butterfield. How about you try that? Your punk ass, whatever son, grandson in law, half half quarter ass son, or whatever he is to you, is sitting in a jail. So your Massey's ass is gonna be sitting in the ground in a few days. You want me to have sympathy? You want me to have sympathy. Do you have any sympathy for the Massey family? The father? Who literally said he didn't know anything about this until his brother or his son or somebody told him about it? Do you have any sympathy for them? Do you? Of course you don't. But you want us to have sympathy for the killer and his family? Lady, if you get on, if you don't pack your ass up, this is what I want you to do, Miss Butterfield. I want you to follow these instructions to the letter. Because at this point, this is the only thing you could possibly do for me and anybody else who wants to see justice done for Sonya Massey. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to get on your computer and go to off.com. Then I want you to buy a villa in off. Okay? Get yourself a nice villa overlooking off ocean or off lake, whatever river. I don't care. Right? Then I need you to go on to uh, uh, Priceline.com. And I need you to find out how much is a one-way trip, a one trip, one-way trip to off. Right? Spend the money, Mrs. Butterfield. Spend the money. I want you to spend the money to go to off, right? Now, I want you to talk to your travel agent and see whether or not you need a passport to get to off. Pretty sure you're going to. So you go down to your local post office and get yourself a passport. And when they ask you, well, are you are you traveling? Yeah, it's a one-way trip. Where are you going? Off. Then, on the day you're supposed to fly to off, I want to make sure that you get a nice, healthy breakfast. Make sure you eat. Because breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Something Sonia Massey will never have again. Then I want you to get in your car or have somebody drive you. Because this is a one-way trip. We don't ever want you to come back. So make sure somebody is driving you to the airport. Now, I understand that you're probably going to have to buy a ticket on one of the airlines that exclusively flies to off. So I'm pretty sure off airlines will be selling cheap tickets. Make sure you check them out. Because they always have deals for people like yourself to buy the ticket, right? Have somebody drive you to the airport. It's going to be at the terminal at the very far end. You'll see a big ass yellow sign with a plane with a finger up called off, right? Go in there, get your bags checked, right? Make sure you get your bags and get them checked underneath because you want to make sure you take everything with you when you off, right? You're going to have to go to the immigration office before you leave the United States. So when you go there, you tell them, I'm on my off and get the stamp for off, All right? I want you to wait. They, they will have a beverage cart or something coming. Get yourself some beverage, get yourself some water because you're really going to need some water because it's a very long trip, to, right? Got yourself a bottle of water, get yourself a bag of chips. Have some of those original uh, uh, hard, hard uh, cooked uh, jalapeno chips. That way, when you're on your way you're off, your ass will burn, All right? And then I want you to wait until you hear the flight attendant go, now boarding for off rows 109 to 1. Okay? Make sure you get in there. Show them your boarding pass. Show them that you have your passport, right? And I want you to get on the plane. Okay? Now, this flight is going to take you a while. So, they will be offering meals while you're flying, right? So, make sure that you... Specify either chicken, beef, or vegetarian, right? Make sure you 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 specify which meal you want in the time that it's going to take you to get the off, right? So, get on a plane, 
Make sure you put your seatbelt on. No smoking, because they've already told you. You see the no smoking sign up there that will say we will we will be arriving at at a certain amount of time. So make sure you change your watch. So you change your watch to that time. You're not going to have air uh, 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 cell phone service, so you won't be able to call your family while you're on your way to off. Right? They'll have movies. I think they might even have Max on there. That gives you enough time to catch up to all eight seasons of Game of Thrones. Pay very close attention to the Red Wedding and put yourself in the shoes of Rob Stark. Okay? Now, when you get, off, you get off the plane, they might speak a different language or they might speak your language. Okay, no, never been there, don't know. Make sure you go by the immigration office. And this time, instead of getting a stamp saying welcome off, you are going to ask for citizenship in off. Okay? I want you to become a naturalized citizen of off. That's what I want you to do. If you seriously think anybody is going to give a about this man who murdered a woman and his family, you are out of your rabbit's mind because here's the part that you didn't put in your little editorial. Telling him not to kill an unarmed black woman. Telling him maybe holster your weapon. But that's too late now, isn't it? It's too late now. Sonia Massey is gone. And as far as sympathy for him, you would be better off following all the steps I just gave you to fly your dumb ass to fuff than you would asking me or any other human being to have an ounce of sympathy for that man. I sincerely hope, Mrs. Butterfield, that you follow these instructions to the letter and go off. Oh, you all can strap in because Bella is sitting this one out because Brenda Butterfield here is just going to be an outright. And that's what I'm going to refer to her as. Now, Brenda Butterfield is the grandmother in law to this piece of that murdered Sonia Massey, Sean Grayson. And she wrote this editorial that I am going to use my platform to respond to. Let's get it. So this is how that pillbilly alabaster snow roach troglodyte glowworm that calls herself the grand mother-in-law of Sean Grayson starts off this letter. First to the protesters. What are you protesting? Sean is in jail. Charges are filed. Trial date to be set and punishment to be applied. Sean is not going anywhere. So please knock off wearing out your sweat glands. So please take your signs and go home and just be humans, not the amusement or disgust to the public. Nothing like a weak ass in their hypocrisy in their white privilege. Like you could just tell somebody that's protesting to go home. See, we're not only protesting that your weak ass grandson in law murdered Sonia Massey. We're protesting the fact that why was his weak ass on a police force in the first place after having four years and six jobs under his belt, not to mention the two the two DUI convictions, uh, you, you knew about that, right? Yeah, you knew about that. That's also part of this protest. He shouldn't have been there in the first place to kill an unarmed black woman. Now continue. Does anyone care about Sean's family or what horrific reality they're dealing with? This week ass talks about horrifying realities. Bitch, did you all have to bury Sean last Friday like Sonia Massey's family had to bury her? Did you all have to contend with the fact that you don't even have all of the circumstances and details surrounding why your weak ass grandson in law, since that's what you want to call him, even their loved one in the first place? You want to talk about horrific realities. What about his fiance he was to marry in October? 
What about his fiance? What about Sonia Massey's children that were looking forward to spending many more birthdays with their mother? Birthdays that your weak ass grandson in law made sure that they would never celebrate with their mother again. She is an innocent young woman who also is unfairly being persecuted. Did they persecute it? In the face of a unarmed black woman in her own home having her life taken by her grandson-in-law? Yep. Leave it to a two cocktail drinking before noon, two pill popping Valium ass white woman to be melodramatic and their oh, whoa, it's me narrative. Does anybody care about the destruction of her life? She is left to deal with an emotional death. What? An emotional death? No, Sonia Massey's family is dealing with a physical, emotional, spiritual death. They put their child into the ground last Friday. What, what, what's she doing? What Isabella's problem? She gets to go see the murderer of Sonia Massey on visitation day. Maybe you should go with her. Sean's future in-law's family, a 2B father-in-law who is as close to Sean as a father can be. Maybe he should have taught Sean not to kill unarmed black women in their own home. Perhaps that would have been a good fatherly advice move, especially since he's a police officer, right? A future mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and brother-in-law who is Sean's friend. Future grandparents who love Sean dearly and still do. You mean like the future mother-in-law that Sonia Massey is never going to get to be now? The future family members that she is never going to get to share any of her life experience with the future grandchildren and great grandchildren that she is never going to get to meet because of your grandson in law. Future grandparents who love Sean dearly and still do. And you still can because Sean is not dead. Shock, disbelief, and reality, but an undying support for Sean. I just got to insert this right quick because this is an editorial to a newspaper, but a whole whitewashed education system. And this is the best grammatical structure you can come up with for this letter. Hmm. The past cannot be relived. Of course it can't. That's always convenient for you all. The future is unknown, but your future includes a shine that is still alive. We only have each day to pray without ceasing. It's interesting that you mention pray without ceasing because um, Sonia Massey was killed after she told your grandson in law that she rebuked him in the name of Jesus. And somehow that still found her face. The shine everybody desires to hate and persecute is not the shine we have all known and love. One more time for the grammatical structure. That should be loved, but I digress. Yeah, you're right. We don't know that shine. We only know the shine that kills unarmed black women in their own homes. You all are not unarmed black women, are you? So you're probably safe. We will always support shine. And you can because Sean is alive. See, a casket is supporting Sonia Massey right now. Judge not, least she be judged. Yeah, I already covered my judgment of you in the beginning of this video. No man woman is without sin. There is a final judgment for us all. Proud grandmother to be of Sean Grayson. Uh, you can't make this up. These privileged alabaster troglodytic glowworm escapees from the Caucasus Mountains think they can just play in our face and we not notice. Like we didn't notice all the religious references in this letter. In the face of your grandson to be Sean Grayson, seeing Sonia Massey in the face when she said, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus.
Yeah, that's my response to this weak ass editorial. Now, the audacity of Brenda Butterfield's later is staggering. She has the nerve to ask if anyone cares about Sean Grayson's family while showing zero empathy for the family of Sonia Massey, the woman her grandson-in-law brutally unalived. Now, her attempt to downplay the, the protests and silence the voices demanding justice for Sonia is a clear indication of the Grayson family's guilt and complicity. They are trying to shift the focus from Sean's heinous crime to their own supposed victimhood. But we won't be fooled. We won't let them use their privilege and influence to sweep this under the rug. The protesters are not just demanding justice for Sonia. They are also demanding accountability for the system that enabled Sean Grayson to become a police officer despite his questionable past. Now, Brenda Butterfield's later is a perfect example of the entitlement and arrogance that allows people like Sean Grayson to think they are above the law. But we won't be silenced. We won't be deterred. We'll keep demanding justice for Sonia Massey and accountability for those who enabled her unaliving. Now, I feel sometimes it's better to keep quiet and show some respect, especially when your family member has committed a heinous crime, but not Brenda Butterfield. Instead of apologizing and showing remorse for her grandson-in-law's brutal unaliving of Sonia Massey, she's writing letters to the editor, asking ridiculous questions, and essentially cheering him on. Now, her letter is a stunning display of tone deafness and arrogance. She's more concerned with silencing the protesters and garnering sympathy for her family than with acknowledging the pain and suffering they've caused. By asking questions like, what are you protesting? And Sean is in jail. What more do you want? She's showing her true colors. She's not interested in justice or accountability. She's only interested in protecting her family's reputation and privilege. Now, her letter is a slap in the face to Sonia's family and loved ones who are still grieving and seeking justice. It's a clear indication of the type of people the Grayson family are, entitled, arrogant, and completely lacking in empathy. Brenda Butterfield's later has done one thing, though. It's shown us the true nature of those who enable and support monsters like Sean Grayson. And for that, we should be grateful, because now we know exactly what we are up against. Now, the more I learn about the Grayson family, the more I understand why Sean Grayson was given a badge despite his questionable past. It's because they simply don't care about the consequences of their actions. They know exactly what type of person he is, but they are willing to overlook it because of their own privilege and biases. The fact that Deputy Scott Butterfield, Sean's father-in-law, went out of his way to ensure Sean got a badge and joined the police force, despite his history of DUI convictions and job hoping, is a clear indication of their disregard for the community they are supposed to serve. It's honestly giving off R to the cis vibes as if they believe they are above the law and can do whatever it takes to protect their own. No matter how flawed they may be, it's a classic case of chronism and nepotism where personal connections and relationships take precedence over qualifications and character. Now, this is how systems of oppression perpetuate themselves by allowing those in power to protect and enable each other no matter the cost. It's a slap in the face to the community and a reminder that we still have a long way to go in terms of true justice and accountability. Now, the fire deputy charged with unaliving in the fatal pew-pewing of Sonia Massey in Illinois had been reprimanded in a previous job over inaccuracies in his police reports, failure to follow orders from a senior leader, and a perceived lack of integrity, according to a disciplinary file. The admonishments are in Sean Grayson's personal file from the Logan County, Illinois Sheriff's Office, where he worked for about a year before he joined the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office. Now, Sangamon County fired Grayson this month, nearly two weeks after he analyzed Massey in her home after she had called police to report a prowler. Now, the records indicate that the Logan County Sheriff's Officer and the Auburn Police Department where he worked from July 2021 to May 2022, had been aware of issues with his performance. The Logan County Sheriff and the Auburn Police Chief declined requests for an interview or comment. It is not clear whether those departments shared any concerns with the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office before Grayson was hired. Now, though the Auburn Police Department appears to have relayed its concerns to Logan County, the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office has not responded to a request for Grayson's personal files. Now, in a conversation record on November 9, 2022, Grayson was called in to talk with Nathan Miller, 
a chief deputy with the Logan County Sheriff's Officer, and Michael Block, who identified himself as a lieutenant with the Sheriff's Officer. In the conversation, Grayson's superiors told him that a report he had written would not be approved and submitted to the state's attorney because it included inaccurate information and could be perceived as official misconduct. Now, NBC News obtained a recording of the conversation from the sheriff's office through a public records request. Others will say you have no integrity and you are lying to get to that traffic stop. One of the men told Grayson in the recording, and I have told you that I have zero tolerance for stretching the law because when you have officers that stretch the law, they will get caught, they will get prosecuted, and they will handcuff the rest of law enforcement in this state and this nation behind their back. Now, Sean Grayson's history speaks for itself. A trail of questionable behavior, including DUI convictions and a string of short-lived jobs. These are just a few examples of his problematic past. Yet, he still managed to find his way back into the police force. And why? Because he has a father-in-law who is willing to pull strings and bend the rules to get him in, regardless of his qualifications or character. But now, his grandmother-in-law, Brenda Butterfield has made a grave mistake by writing a letter to the editor that is tone deaf and insensitive. Instead of acknowledging the harm caused by Sean's actions, she's asking ri ridiculous questions like, what are you protesting? And Sean is in jail, what more do you want? Now, these questions should be asked in reverse. How does she think Sonia Massey's family feels? How does she think the community feels knowing that someone with Sean's history is allowed to wear a badge? The audacity of our letter is a slap in the face to those who are still grieving and sick justice by writing this later brenda butterfield has shown her true colors she's more concerned with protecting her family's reputation than with acknowledging the harm they've caused but it's too late the damage is done we see them for who they are and we won't let them get away with it we have finally come to the end of the video but what do my viewers have to say share your thoughts as well in the comment section thank you for watching and see you in my next video